Hey, this is Vincent with the Best Day Movie Show, and I'm here with Robert McNaughton. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. So I'm, good. Uh, I'm here in Orlando. It's sun sunny. I came from New York, which is cold and raining. It was cold and raining when you left. Freezing cold and raining. Is this? Oh, I, how, what can I, how can I complain? There's a Perkins right here. Popeyes across the street. You're what more heaven, can right? you want? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the is this the 30th anniversary of ET? No. Or are we past that? We're past that, unfortunately. Or are we at 30, 35. 35? Yeah. So are Which you. It's always crazy to me because I, I, I grew up watching Happy Days on television in the 80s, 70s, 80s. And I always remember it seemed like like ancient, like a ancient history, the 50s. And now we're way further on from the 80s than we were from the 50s back then. So Have you ever done a uh, show with uh, the Fonz or Henley Winkler or any of that? No. No? I never met any of the, any of those guys that I can recall. Um, no, I, I've always wanted to meet Henry Winkler. I did a convention with them, but he was mobbed, and so I never right. got a chance. So have you, since the 30th, have you, is this what you've been doing lately, is these conventions for the, like the, I mean, I know here we're, we, we have four of the main cast members. Or yeah, three. this is a good one because it has Matt Matt Demerit who played in the ET costume. He did all of the stunts. We call him the stunt ET. I think that's how he's billed in the end. He did the the drunk scenes and the scenes where ET scene where um, the Halloween scene where Mary's taking our picture with the Polaroid camera. Oh yeah, you're, you're by the you're he's by falling the, uh, down. Yeah. All the physical comedy was Matt. He, and he, uh, he also did the one where he was drinking the beer. Yeah. Yeah. The drunk he, scene. Yeah, and he hit the. Um, All of the ET. That the reason ET walks like he does is because of Matt. Oh, was that was that what the story was? Yeah, Matt. Matt is a. He, he was, was born with no legs, right? Right. So he, but he he didn't use prosthetic legs, and so he he gets he around on his. Yeah, he has a skateboard, or he walks on his hands. So the reason ET has that walk, and Matt demonstrates it a lot better than me, is because he was going like this. Now I talked to Matt last night. He's such a good guy. He's great. Matt. Matt. He's me. Seen... Henry was 10 henry's a great kid well now he's a great guy uh henry was 10 matt was 12 and i was 14 and we all hung out together um that was matt was i can't even tell you he he, he was the best of us he, he is the best of us now when was he et shot summer winter uh et was shot like november in 81 so it was cold no it was all it mostly it was in the um in southern california and when we started shooting, we were all wearing cold weather gear. In the film, we're supposed to be up in the Redwoods. And so everybody's wearing parkas and stuff. And I remember it was like close to 100 degrees one day in Los Angeles. We were in the valley, which is uh, hotter than the rest of Los Angeles. Because it's, I don't know, it's like this more smog or something. Right, 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 right. And, uh, and, and I remember a girl passed out. One of the extras that was waiting for the bus in one scene passed out from the heat. Um, so then, so the, the, the exteriors, it was kind of hot. The interiors, we were all on a soundstage, so it didn't matter. And then the last week of filming, it was cold because we went up to Crescent City, California, which is like right on the border of Oregon. And uh, that was up in the Redwoods. And that was freezing. How many, what was it, how many months or days was the shoot? Uh, I have the call sheet, and I think it was 61 days, if I'm not mistaken. 61 days was the, the, what the, the, uh, primary filming the uh, production filming lasted 61 and then there was pr post production afterwards but just a few days here and there now do you ever when these conventions do you ever get to do is I guess I, would, I don't know if this is a dumb question or not but is, does uh, Drew Baymore ever come and, and visit or does he ever do a I haven't seen Drew since 2002 um, you know I, I think she does the convention sometimes for her beauty products because she has a whole beauty line uh, uh, so I, you know, it's not. I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility, but I'm not going to speak for her because I, I run into people all the time that have seen her just in New York, and she's always, you know, signing autographs for people. I, right. A ton of people here have her autograph that have that I've interacted with, and it's usually from just running into her on the street in New York. And I, I've lived there for now. Uh, well, I've lived there since 2011. So eight years, so when and you guys I've get never together, run into her. When you guys get together, it's like a big family reunion. Kind of. It's always neat to see everybody again. You and especially Dean. Henry, I've stayed close to throughout the years. What about 
Uh, uh, and Dee, of yeah. course. She's such a good lady, too. She is. She has so many stories, too, because she was in oh, she, Cujo. She, she's been in a lot of stuff. She's been in over 200 films. Yeah, she's great. Going back to, uh, I, I remember her in 10 is the first movie I remember her in, uh, the Dudley Moore movie, which you're too young to remember. Uh, I've heard of it. I don't know. It was a sensation. At the time, it was because of Bo Derek. It was like a, a really good movie, too, Blake Edwards' movie. How was it working on the set with uh, Steven Spielberg? He was really good to work for. Um, I thought I was amazed at his touch with the actors and just he really, really cared. yeah, really good with uh, letting us add our own ideas and uh, was, you know getting getting a fresh performance out of people. He really had a knack for that. He was so accomplished by that point, having just come off of Raiders. At that point, uh, he could do anything. So when you heard you were working with him, it was exciting. Oh, <laughs> I was the biggest Close Encounters fan. Uh, I saw Star Wars the first day it came out, but I was—I guess I was more into the, the more thoughtful movies or more uh, heartfelt movies. I don't know. Star Wars just amazed me, and it was like great. I stayed in the theater on the first day it came out. I watched it three times, but Close Encounters like kind of spoke to me, and. Um, and so I remember my dad got a magazine, Starlog magazine, and brought it home and it had Close Encounters on the cover and I hugged him. It's like one of the few times I hugged my dad when I was uh, young. Now, I was, I, was talking to, I was talking to Matthew yesterday and he was telling me that movie was supposed to be like a sequel or a prequel to E.T. It was supposed Close to Encounters? Be, yeah, it's what, it's what he, he explained to me. Because I watched this document, this, this 30 minute interview with him at another convention and he told the audience that it was supposed to be the sequel to E.T. Like a horror sequel. No, no, no. Uh, I think what you mean is, okay, what they originally did was there was a script I never have seen, but it was a different screenwriter named John Sayles. Great screenwriter and a great director. Um, but they had optioned him to do a horror film which was uh, Aliens. Stephen had the idea that he wanted a movie about uh, maybe a, a horror movie about aliens. Like, then at some point he was filming Raiders of the Lost Ark with um, Harrison Ford and Melissa Matheson was Harrison Ford's uh, wife and and she, he was brainstorming with her and um, decided to go with a more uh, uh, more family kind of like you know a, a, a softer ET right uh, a more heartfelt story and so so that's so then he kind of scrapped the night skies project but he didn't really scrap it it turned into poltergeist a lot of the elements from night skies ended up in poltergeist but it wasn't the same story at all as night skies um any funny stories or pranks on the set of et that you guys did as kids i don't know about pranks we all hung out as uh kids generally matt and henry and i hung out and so I remember there was there was a kid who was sort of bullying some of the other kids. One, not one of the main, not one of the main cast, not one of the cast members at all. In fact, one of the kids who was a stand-in for us. And um, Matt was an athletic kid. He was like get around on his arms, but his biceps were humongous, and he was just real athletic. And I remember this kid was like hassling some, one of the girls, uh, and Matt was on this like ramp and he grabbed a bar and Henry remembers this too and he like launched himself at the guy and just tackled him and so that's one of my memories from it there wasn't a lot of pranks or like there's no um, blooper reel because it was shot so efficiently Steven brought the movie in under budget and under time like he was really you know uh, he had it all storyboarded out he knew what he was going to do every day and really efficient with the movie, and uh, <laughs> it paid off. Now, was ET your first film, or was it? I mean, was that pretty much? It was much, my first feature film. So that launched your career. Yeah, I did. I did like three TV movies before that. The year before that. So after ET, you, uh, what did you? Then I did a, a lot of theater work, which is where I started, and I did a lot of theater um, till I was thirty. Uh, a lot of New York uh, plays in New York and all over the country. I did Shakespeare in the Park. I did a show for the BBC in Italy, uh, like a, a Dennis Potter show. Uh, 
you know, some of my proudest work is not the credits anybody knows, but right. it's stuff that I'm the most proud of. Now, you ever get recognized on the streets? No. No? No, one time in New York. Really? Or in New York, is a weird thing is nobody says anything. Yeah. A lot of people walk around. You know, I've seen people, and I saw Daniel Day-Lewis walking around in Soho. And I went up to him and said something, because I couldn't. Nice. I couldn't not. Uh, but he was walking in with his wife there. Uh, so you see people walking around, but not pe- people don't approach them very often. They, they want to let them live their lives. Right, right. Now, as, I mean, it, it's harder for these a lot of these bigger actors because they can't really go to places because they know they're going to get mobbed by autographs or photos. You know, it it's, doesn't it's, happen as much in New York, I'd say. Some places they do. Some places they're waiting for you when you get there. Uh, the, the, not me, but people like Drew, uh, you know, it can get crazy. What do you think... Um, from when you when you shot ET, from to now the, the way they shoot movies, what do you think the biggest thing difference is on sets or or with the, the making of the movie? Like, what do you what do you think has changed in the last 30, 40 years? Now? I haven't really. I've done some independent, low budget films since then. Just mostly films like my wife is an actress, and she was the lead in a role in a um, movie called Laugh Killer Laugh, and a director asked me to work on it, and I did one day. So that so I haven't got the experience of working on film since CGI <laughs> yeah. and since the uh, advent of the technology where a director can direct the film from the other room because of digital technology. Steven was doing that with videotape but it's not quite the same and with CCTV but now it's beyond that. Now the, the director can watch exactly what's being filmed and he could be you know, in another country. Uh, so I, I haven't had the experience of working like that. Um, if you could take one piece of information that you uh, you learned from Steven Spielberg what would it be uh, I mean you, you, you're around the man you know for a while like, does he teach you anything or tell you anything just an incredible that... knowledge for movies and for films and you know like a historian almost um, he's just I, I I love working for him I feel like I was you know lucky to have worked for him I think his exuberance more than anything he People are nervous meeting him, and he's so excited, whatever he's telling you about. Well, he's so into Whatever it, it is at the he's time. So, well, I mean, he seems like he's so into what he's doing. Like, he genuinely Always. likes to joy doing. And so people, they're nervous, and then they, they're not nervous after about a minute of talking to him. Cause well, cause they, they, they probably feel like he's one of the boys now. But he is. He's always been like that. Yeah. It's like he was like one of the teenagers when we were working on E.T., what do you uh, What do you watch these days? You, have you seen any movies in the theaters? Or are you? I watch like television. Like I think series. Television is so great. You're seeing now. Supergirl, right? Or Super? I haven't seen su- Super. Oh, lately I've been. The only movies I see in the theater are superhero movies because <laughs> I got uh, I got four kids. So uh, and the oldest likes the Avengers and those those movies, and then the youngest ones want me to go see the uh, you know Batman type movies or the. You know, is, there any, is there any superhero movies you've seen lately that you really enjoyed? I've seen all of them in the theaters, like usually on the first day or the couple days after. Yeah. Uh, I just saw Captain Marvel with my my oldest. Which son, would they my Captain Marvel? Not my oldest, my second oldest son, Hunter. Uh, I liked it because especially the young Samuel Jackson. I love that effect of making him look like, you know, he didn't look like that in his twenties, but they made him look like you know a young Nick Fury. It just amazes really cool. me the stuff they do these days that. They, they couldn't do back in, back in the 80s that they're just it's just game they changing did it with things Robert Downey Jr. and Michael Douglas too it's like it's incredible and they can make them look different from how they look younger so they can make them very character oriented um, so I'm really looking forward to Avengers we're gonna try to go the first day or the first what about Shazam um, Shazam looks fun I saw it I, I saw it last week oh it's out already no no okay. I got a special screening oh wow yeah yeah they, they do I advanced want- screenings it was really funny. It really looked it was, funny. It was really funny, and and. Uh, but it doesn't look too campy. No, Zachary like. Leverly was really good in it, and uh, here Zachary Leverly, he, uh, Zachary, uh, no, Zachary. Leverly, he's the lead. He's, he's the lead. He reminds me of like a, a young Jimmy Fallon. Wow. Yes, I mean, just in his face, and just like some of his jokes he does. Um, see, I grew up with the Shazam on television, which is the most incredibly cheesy program. It was right before ISIS. Uh, uh, older people will know this. Yeah, that that it, it was like Saturday morning television, Shazam and ISIS back to back was like the coolest thing when you were ten, uh, back in the seventies. 
and you know, the Incredible Hulk was uh, Lou Ferrigno always. That's uh, still good. You know, and that was, but that you had to like watch once a week. That was on, you know. It was like Batman, you know. Yeah, at night. Same bad times, same. At night. It would drive me nuts. At night, you have to wait. Six Million Dollar Man, Incredible Hulk. There's a handful of them that were just like what I grew up on. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, man, and talking with us. Thank you.